us down here. Okay. Hey guys, thanks for being patient with me here. We've got two cameras going, one to record and one to try to do the live because they weren't working together, so we'll just make it work now. So, hi, I'm Janelle. If we haven't officially met, because I never know who is watching these things, and I'm just tired of sitting around at home. So as a yoga teacher, I felt like bringing my classes online. So here we go, working and trying this out. I hope you guys can see okay. So thank you so much for joining me. Today's theme of the class is more of a hip focus, like a happy hips kind of a class, because I'm sure we've all been sitting around a lot more uh, than we're used to. And so I'm going to start seated, but if you want to start um, standing or even in a chair, if your hips are super tight, that's always an option. Or if you've got like a couple of props you might want to grab, um, that could be a great option as well. And maybe a big book, maybe a pillow or bolster style thing, maybe even a couple of blankets. So I see that there's some comments coming in, but I can't quite read them because my screen is far away. But maybe I'll have an interpreter. Oh, you're right in front of my camera, Steph. My phone. See no, look to the right, that's where my phone is. Hi, this is Steph, I'm using her house because she's got at least a nice big window. Anyways, let's just get started. So either sitting cross-legged or if you like your legs out extended, anywhere where you can start to settle in. So starting to center in, maybe starting to notice how you're feeling this evening, maybe rolling those shoulders back and down. And see if you can feel those sits bones. So if you're sitting down, kind of feel that sinking in feeling. And then if you're rounding through the shoulders, let's find some length through the spine. So by pressing into those sits bones, start to find that length, lengthening right through the crown of the head. Roll the shoulders up, back and down. And if you're comfortable with it, maybe just taking a moment just to close the eyes and really focus a little bit on how you're doing. Maybe seeing any of those areas of tension, and can you just start to notice them? I've got a little spot right where my ribs would connect. It's a little tight, a little sore. And then see if you can focus in on the breath. And as soon as we start to notice the breath, we'll start to breathe a little bit deeper. And so can you really accentuate that? Maybe breathing right into the belly. Let's take a breath together, inhaling nice and deep. And exhale, let it go. Let's take five more of those. You can do them at your own count but really just start to notice the breath breathing in as deep as you can, really feeling the lungs all the way down into the diaphragm, and then exhaling, letting it go, letting it be audible. So I'll join in with you guys now, breathing in and letting it go. Notice how on those inhales, the shoulders rise. And exhale, everything sinks back in, pulls in towards the middle. And can you use those exhales to really start to soften, really start to let go of any stress? Excellent. And so coming in to maybe adding on to that breath now. As we inhale, let's sweep and lift the arms up. Reach nice up and tall. If you want, you can either just reach the hands up or you can interlace them coming to steeple. Or if you want more, you can flip the wrists or the palms reaching upwards. Really feel that. Now lower those shoulders back down. Engage those last couple of ribs. Bring belly button towards the spine. Excellent. Exhale. Release it down. Let's inhale. Reach it up. Exhale. Hands to heart. One more. Inhale. Reach up. Exhale. Hands to heart. Excellent. Let's bring hand to opposite knee. Reach out other hand back behind. Maybe as a second spine, spine pressing in to get a little bit taller. And then exhale. Maybe to twist a little bit deeper. If you want more from this twist, this hand back behind can start to tuck around the body, maybe reaching for the bind, reaching for that other leg, or even just out in the air floating back so you're not pressing in for that grounding, but you're finding it from the sits bones, maybe looking over that shoulder, take a nice big breath, still try to feel the belly filling up with air, and exhale, let it go, start to unwind on twist. Find that neutral position again. And then let's come over to the other side. So reaching for that opposite knee. Hand can either go back behind, press in, inhale. Let's get a little bit taller, deeper. And then exhale, twist even more. Maybe looking over, maybe playing around with it this side, maybe trying for the bind. 
on this side or just holding the arm out, maybe even looking over the shoulder and keep holding that twist here. We're holding it for a couple of breaths, really trying to feel all of those core muscles squeezing together. Excellent, exhale, release, and come on back towards neutral. Let's inhale, reach the arms up, bring thumbs interlaced, palms facing forward, and walk those shoulders right back down your back. Find that length extending through the crown of the head, so you have the shoulders and the back line of the body pressing down, so the bones pressing in, and then lifting up a little bit higher. Excellent, let's take a side bend into this, tipping over to one side, and if you start to crumple into this, see if you can open up that top elbow, reach a little bit higher. Excellent. Maybe coming a little bit deeper and keep pressing into that opposite sit bone. Feel that core engaging as we're holding here. Excellent. Let's come on back up. Let's switch the thumbs to play around with the grip using that non-dominant side. Reset. Engage through the core and over towards the other side. Excellent. Reaching nice and tall and strong. Roll shoulders down. Maybe go a little deeper. A little more. Keep opening up top shoulder. Beautiful. Let's inhale. Come on back up. Hands to heart center. And take a little bow. Maybe you just want to stretch the back of the neck. Chin goes towards the chest. Or if you want to start to reach those hands forward, maybe onto the knee or hands forward even more. Dropping the head down. But try to keep a flat back. Don't round through the spine. See if you can find that length. Feel those sits bones pressing in. Excellent. Let's walk those hands back up and switch the feet. So bring the opposite one in front or on top. However you like to sw sit, just switch it over to the other side. Excellent. Feel the sit bones. Maybe give yourself a nice little wiggle. And then inhale, reach up. This time, reach up, look up, and then try to engage through the throat a little bit. So it's not just a tipping of the head back. It can even be quite subtle, so it doesn't have to go all the way back. It could just be a little bit of a millimeter or two as you look up. But try to engage through that throat. Excellent, hold here, and exhale, hands start center, bring that nice bow down, round through the spine here, release the hands, inhale, reach up, engage through that throat as you look up, imagine yourself bending over a ball backwards, and exhale, hands to heart, bowing down, one more of those, reach on up, look up, go as deep as you want, or keep it nice and gentle, even if you're just simply here, and that still works if those shoulders are tired and sore, excellent, hands start center, round, 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 Drop the hands into a forward fold. And so whether you just want to keep elbows on the knees or reach those hands forward, whatever works best for you here. See if you can connect in with that breath. Excellent. Let's take a nice inhale and let it go. And start to walk those hands back up. Let's inhale, bring the arms out to a T, reach nice and long, bring the arms to cactus. Excellent, squeeze those shoulder blades together, feel that opening up, beautiful. And then let's just tip over to one side, so just a different variation of a side bend, bringing into some body awareness here. Lots of times we'll want to close our arms so we can still see our elbows or our arms. Can you find that openness? Tip down, maybe even a little more. Excellent. If you want, you can drop that bottom hand down and plant it nice and deep, maybe even opening up that top shoulder, stacking shoulder over shoulder. Press into that bottom hand, then come on back up and over to the other side, finding your depth, feeling that stretch all the way from where it would connect into the hip here, all the way through the ribs, see if you can find a little bit more. Excellent. Shoulder over shoulder, Maybe look up where the gaze goes, the body goes. And so if you find it going here, that peripheral vision, open it up by looking up higher. Excellent. Let's press all the way back up, reach up, and start center. Beautiful. Let's bring the knees together, planting the feet in front. Plant on at first by grabbing onto the, the fronts of the knees. And lots of times we just hang out in this more of a rounded position here. I'll turn a little bit so that you can see. This is my neutral position growing up, was super slouchy and all over the place. And it has taken oh, so many years uh, for this to feel normal, and that's still not even great posture. And so with wherever you're at, can you find some length? 
Imagining that crown of the head, rolling your shoulders down and engaging through that core, zipping up that mula bandha as we like to call it in yoga, that pelvic floor. So engaging through those inner thighs, zip everything up and in. If you're finding it hard, lean back a little bit more, engage it, suck the belly inwards and then you've got it. Beautiful. Let's tuck the hands in underneath the knees, then start to bring the feet closer towards the body as you roll back onto those sit bones. You can hang out with the toes just down on the mat, or if you want more, you can start to float the feet up. Now the goal here is to be mindful of those shoulders. Lift on up, roll back and down, and we're just going to engage through the core here. So to start to activate through that core, you can take that quick exhale breath, that Feel how that sucks. Everything in is nice and strong. Actually, and I'll start to bring the hands to the outside edges of the knees. If that's enough for you, go ahead and stay there. But if you're looking for more, then you can either maybe start to lift the legs a little bit higher, maybe even pointing through the toes. Keep trying to find that length, and then maybe reaching the hands away from the knees. Beautiful. The higher up the legs go, the more intensity you'll have. Same thing with the arms. If you want more, reach the arms out or reach the arms up. Excellent. Engage through that core. Zip up. Excellent. And then let's hug the knees back in and lower back down. Rolling those shoulders still back and down. Excellent. Let's extend one leg long and out to the side a little bit. Then hug that other knee in. Excellent. If this is uncomfortable for you, you can always drop that knee out to the side. If hugging it in doesn't really feel good. Maybe this is your challenge though, of bringing the knee or holding on to the knee even farther out or bringing it closer or maybe even starting to float that leg in, giving it a nice big hug, maybe even reaching for the toes. Or if you want, we can come into our nice swaddle the baby. So maybe just grab the leg like this and hold it out to the side, maybe a nice little rock, or you can start to bring the foot above the crook of the elbow. Still finding that leg, so if you're hunching into it, maybe you've gone too far. Maybe can you activate into that extended leg? Now I love to just rock a little bit back and forth here. I'm getting into the hip, feeling that little bit of emotion, feeling that sits bone, feeling different. If you're not feeling anything here, and this is too easy, and you want more, like that's when you can start to really try to connect your little big toe with your forehead. And just in case you're there, you can even go into your full compass pose here or any other variations. But I'm gonna teach at this level right here. Excellent, so just feel that nice squeeze in, feel that external rotation of the hip as maybe you start to bring the knee a little bit farther out. Beautiful. Excellent, let's start to release that leg. Let's plant it on the other side of that extended leg. You can give yourself a nice big hug. Let's come into another twist. So I have my right leg ex extended here. So I'm gonna take my opposite hand back behind and either just hug onto the knee here, or if you want, if you can twist it, you'll start to bring the arm to the outside edge of the knee. Pressing, if you want more, you can start to release that back hand, or even go for the bind. Instead of reaching out, you can reach back around, maybe reaching for the leg or if your shoulder can clear the knee you can tuck that hand back behind but I've got a little like T-Rex arms so me and binds aren't really cool so we hang out here let's connect with the breath and exhale release come back release that foot maybe give it a nice little shake then let's start to journey with that other foot so bringing the right foot in either just hanging out here finding that length or bringing it in a little bit closer Starting to really extend through those toes that are extended, coming a little taller, maybe picking up that foot, maybe reaching for the foot, giving it a nice little wave around, or coming into that cradle of the baby, whether you're hanging out with your foot here, or want to do the full swaddle of the baby. Excellent. Let's take a little bit of movement. I rolled twice on the other side, one way, and then I stopped, go the other way. Excellent. Still feeling those sits bones and that hip joint. Maybe bringing the knee a little bit farther forward. Excellent. Find what feels really good for you here. So if there is something that I'm not offering and you're like, oh, I want to explore and try that. Absolutely, this is the time for you to play around with it. Excellent. Start to release through that bind. If you had it in tight, bring that foot to the other side of that extended leg. And let's start just by finding that nice posture. Find the length. Sit up nice and tall. 
Bring the opposite hand of the leg that's extended up and around, back behind you, press in, find that length, and then let's twist to your depth here. So maybe this is where you're at, and that's fine. Maybe if you want more, you can really twist, trying to bring that shoulder back behind you, or arm to the other side. Really, this hand is just anchoring in to twist a little bit deeper through the middle. Maybe you want to lift that back hand up, and then tuck it around, maybe coming for your version of the bind. And connect with that breath. Excellent. Oh, let's release. And come back and release the foot. Send both legs long. Give them a nice shake here. Excellent. And then, so sitting in our staff pose. So if your back is really sore, you can bring your hands back behind you giving you that nice little break. Or if you want, you can engage through that core, suck everything up and in. Try to bring those shoulders over the hips. If your low back is really tight, maybe like this is just totally enough for you. Or if that low back is a little bit more open, maybe you can imagine sending your sit bones back behind you and bringing the shoulders either just right above the sit bones or maybe even just a touch or a millimeter forward. Engage through the feet. Make sure the toes are equal distance away from the body so they're not bending in or out. Nice and active there and find that length. So right now we're just targeting into those hip flexors. Really, it looks like we're just sitting, but if your legs are active, you're going to be feeling this right through the hips. If you're feeling this tons through those hamstrings, you can always bring a gentle bend to the legs, but you might lose it a bit through those hip flexors. But it's more important to protect the body than to try to go for something. So finding that length, excellent. Beautiful, let's release that and come into all fours. And so coming into the body, well, let me just spin around here. Make sure that you can kind of see what I'm doing. So planting those hands under those shoulders, knees under the hips. Make sure the hands are nice and wide, like nice giant pizza slices. Excellent. And then let's come into some cat-cow breath, continuing to warm up through the spine. So inhale, drop the belly down, start to look up. And when you feel like you're at your max, press harder into your hands. See if you can find some more length. And activate through that throat again. Maybe looking up a little bit higher. Excellent. Exhale, tuck the chin around through that spine. And again, when you feel like you're at your max, press firmer into the hand. See if you can find just a touch more. Excellent. Let's take a couple of these at your own pace. I like to really slow them down and feel every vertebrae in my spine starting to release and let go and warm up and lengthen. Beautiful. Coming to nice and neutral here. Nice flat back. I'm going to untuck my toes. I always forget to do that, which is, I think, fine. And then I'm going to send, you can pick a foot, so just sending one foot back. Touch the toes into the ground. A lot of times as we send a foot back, we start to open up through that hip. And can you send that hip down, squaring it level with the ground, pressing firm into both hands? Excellent. And then start to walk the opposite hand forward. And keep it touched down onto the ground so you're just tenting the fingers. And then now press into those fingers and into that foot. See if you can find that length. Notice how you automatically corrected, rolling maybe that shoulder back, nice and firm. And let's engage through the core. Send the belly button slightly towards the spine. Nice and strong, float the foot up. Take a little look at it. Make sure the toes are pointing down. And then reach the hand up. Beautiful tiger posture. And keep a tuck of the chin. Find that length. Imagine someone pulling on that hand and you're kicking into a wall or someone's pulling on that. See if you can just see if you can find that extra millimeter. Excellent. Let's bring elbow towards knee. We'll turn these into little crunchies. They don't have to come to touch. I'm just moving in that direction and playing around here. So one thing I notice is when I cue elbow towards knee, I have this beautiful rounding that can happen through the spine. But if you want to isolate more into the shoulder, more into the hip, try to do that with a nice flat back. And then you're just moving those two joints, opposed to getting it everything through the spine moving together. So choosing whatever you want. Let's take two more. Reach it out and together. Reach out and hold nice and strong. Excellent. Drop the hand. Bring the knee back in. Take a nice little sway from side to side. Excellent. And coming back to some stillness. 
and then getting ready to do the other side. So sending the foot back, touching it down onto the mat, and then walking those fingertips. And take a moment here to press into both, feel that engagement, tuck the chin, start to feel the length already. Engage through the core, belly button towards the spine, and then float back, foot up, toes pointing down, take a little glance at them, and then lift the head. Reach, reach, reach. Excellent, connect with the breath here. Don't forget to be breathing throughout this. Excellent, use that exhale to bring elbow towards knee. <sighs> Inhale, reach it out. And exhale together. Beautiful. So if you want, you can take a couple where you start to round through that spine, continuing to warm it up there. Or you can start to just really isolate a little bit more into the shoulder, into the hip. Excellent. You're going to take a couple of each. Whatever works for you today. Excellent. Let's take three more here. Four, two. One more. And reach out nice and strong and hold. Find that traction. Tuck the chin. Reach. Maybe lift that leg a little bit higher. Excellent. Drop the hand and drop the knee. And take that nice relieving sway from side to side. Excellent. I'm just going to spin at just a bit of an angle here so that I can connect in with you guys. And so that I can show you what's going on. So now I'm going to start by bringing one leg out to the side. So whether it's your 3 o'clock or your 9 o'clock position. And then I'm going to walk those hands closer to my body. Pressing firm into the knee and into that foot. Bring shoulders over hips. Excellent, inhale, reach the hands up, nice and tall. I'm coming to steeple here, whatever works best for you. Roll the shoulders back down, but don't let the ribs fly out. So see if you can tuck them in. Excellent. And hands start at center. Inhale, reach up, coming to steeple again. And let's tip over towards that extended leg. So a nice little side stretch here. Activating into that inner thigh. So zipping everything up. See if you can really squeeze that hip flexor, squeeze that core. So not just shrinking into it, but imagine lengthening first and then dipping over a ball. Excellent. Keep holding. Connect with that breath. And inhale. And come on back up. Reach up nice and tall and tip over to the other side. Maybe planting that hand if you're able to into the mat or grabbing a block or a prop. Reach that hand either all the way up or overhead, or if that shoulder is tired, you can just leave it alongside the body or even tuck it behind the back, creating a little bit of opening sensation there. So lots of options for you to play around with. If you want more from that extended leg, from that hip, then you can start to float that leg up. Excellent. Maybe flexing through the foot and extend through the heel. Excellent. Squeezing and holding. Beautiful. And drop the foot down and come on back up. Reach the arms up. Hands start center. And then connect the hands back down. Excellent. Let's bring that knee back in and go straight into the other side. And so bring that foot out either to the nine or the three o'clock position. Take a moment here to set into that foot. Excellent. Nice and strong. And then start to walk hands up. Hands on the hips, maybe, or if you're able, sweep them up. Reach up, roll shoulders down, engage through that core. Excellent. And start center. Inhale up. Keep that engagement. And imagine rolling over that ball, finding that length as you reach, and coming into that nice little side bend. Excellent. Maybe even changing the gaze upward to roll that top shoulder back. Beautiful. Inhale up. Exhale. Release and come down to the planting that hand. Maybe reaching top arm up more overhead or alongside the body. You can just take it easy here. This works just as well. See if you can really feel that lengthening and that happening right through here. Beautiful. Keep holding. If you want more, you can start to lift that extended leg, like flexing through the foot. One full breath. So breathing in and let it go. And drop it back down and start to come up. 
hands start center. Start to walk those hands down. Excellent. And either bringing the knees close together and then reaching the arms forward to release more of that low back or bringing the knees nice and wide and then reaching the hands forward for your child's pose. So whatever variation, I love the reaching arms forward mostly because I love creating a little bit of traction here. So I'm actually pulling into my hands as I'm trying to get my hips closer towards the ground. So the goal is not to be sitting on my feet here, but to feel that beautiful stretch all through my arms, the side of my body, through my spine, and then also releasing into those hips. And then if I'm still creating that pulling motion, I like to mix things up and create a bit of a pushing motion. Just stretches a couple of different muscles, works more of the middle line of the spine, and come to neutral. Simply enjoy. One more full round of breath. Excellent. Pressing into those hands. Work yourself back up. Bring those knees back under you. Tuck the toes under. And let's find our downward dog for today. Pressing firm into those hands. Playing around. Maybe pedaling it out. And stretching those calf muscles. Excellent. Maybe you like to do a couple little rolly hip dips. Or whatever you like. One more full round of breath here as we hold this downward dog, feeling that stretch through everywhere. Look to the front of the mat and hop, step, jump, tiptoe, waddle, however you want to get there, and find yourself in a nice forward fold. Release the head, give it a nice shake, no. Excellent. You can start to move the hands around. If that, those hamstrings are really tight, bring a gentle bend to the knees, maybe even resting the body onto the legs. That'll help release that low back a little bit more. Excellent. Let's start to come halfway up. Let's plant the hands above the knees and press into them. Find that length. Roll the shoulders back and down. Extend long through the crown of the head. Bend the knees. Sink the hips. Sweep the hands up. Finding your chair pose. And then pressing all the way up to standing. Reach up. Hands start center. Release the hands. Inhale, sweep up. If you want a little back bend here, you can take it, send the hips forward. Hands start center. Roll shoulders back and down. And find that nice stable mountain pose. Excellent. Inhale, reach the hands up. Holding here, interlace either at the fingers or imagine holding on to a block or holding the sunshine and then tip over to one side. Excellent, try and take first here, keep the hips stacked over the ankles. Excellent, engage through that core. Inhale up, exhale, other side. Beautiful, Find that strength. Inhale up, and start center. Excellent, let's step that right foot back behind you, coming into a warrior two reach the hands up. You can adjust the distance here. And so if you find yourself, your knee really far over your foot, that's a pretty good sign that you can take either a bigger stance. So bringing the feet a little farther apart, trying to get that knee more or less over the ankle. Reach the arms out nice and wide. Sink a little deeper. Really start to feel that stretch and that pull through the body. Feel the strength in it. I like to imagine my back hip rolling open, but not at compromising the front knee. So keeping that knee open and over the ankle, as you just imagine that leg just spinning out and open, that usually helps me get a little bit deeper. Excellent. Keep holding one full breath here. Beautiful. Let's come into extended side angle. So front arm rests on the knee, reach the hand up overhead. Keep rolling shoulder over shoulder. Top arm goes back a bit. Excellent. Beautiful. If you want more, you can start to reach that bottom arm down or even onto the ground. Top arm can come up. Arm can go overhead. And playing around with the posture, finding what works best for you. But keep pressing firm into those feet. So nice, strong legs here. Excellent. Let's inhale, make our way back to our warrior two. And straighten through the front leg. Bring hands onto hips. Point both toes towards the long edge of the mat. Imagine those imaginary jean pockets tucking those elbows back behind you. Lift the heart. Then exhale, protecting that low back. And start to bow forward. Coming into your version of a wide-legged forward fold. 
And so whether you're hanging out here or coming down, keep those hands back behind you. If you want more, you can interlace them, bring them up overhead, feeling that squeeze through the shoulder blades. Imagining that hinge from the hips too. Can you send the sits bones up higher? Squeezing everything up and in. The legs are nice and strong and engaged. And if the hands are overhead, let's release them back down. And releasing them all the way, either grabbing onto the back of the knees, the ankles, or for the great toe. Just something that helps you anchor in. Still strong through the legs here. Excellent. Let's inhale. Halfway lift. Planting those hands above the knees, just like we did in our other forward fold. And you send long through the crown of the head, slight tuck of the chin. But find that bit of a length. Some gentle bend through the knees. And press all the way up to standing and reach up. Excellent. Hands start center. Relaxing those hands down. And spinning over in the opposite foot. Pointing forward now. Warrior two on the other side. Excellent. How fun to not have to play around with the front of the room to make this nice transition. So sinking in nice and deep into that warrior two. Imagine that hip spinning open just to find that depth. Keeping the knee over the foot though. Don't compromise through there. If the arms are getting tired, you can do what I call boss arms. Hands behind the head and maybe even opening up through the shoulders. Just don't be pushing the head forward. Keep the head in line. Excellent. And then come into our extended side angle. So dropping that elbow onto the knee, reach up and over, sink into it. Beautiful. Finding that length. Maybe playing around with a different arm position. Connecting with the breath. But still pressing firm into those feet. And the top arm goes up. Oh, my dog's gonna make an appearance now. Hi. Can you go lay down? Excellent. She just took a nice nap. Did you stop and smell the flowers? Excellent. Come on back up to our warrior two. Reach long. Extend. She's laying on my mat. So I got a little partner here. Coming into that warrior two. Excellent. Straighten through the front of the leg. And drop the hands down. And step towards the front of the mat. Hey. Excuse me, please. This is my mat. You have your setup over there to yoga. Thank you. Stepping towards that top of the mat. Let's just take a little moment here. Let's inhale, reach up. Exhale, come into a nice forward fold here. Being aware of those hamstrings, of the hips, of that low back, working with that whole section of the body. Maybe now you notice it's a little bit easier to straighten through the legs. You can bend one leg. And the other, playing around with it a little bit. Or if that low back is still real tight, just still bring that bend to the knees. Maybe even reach for opposite elbows and let the head really dangle. Excellent. Let's inhale. Halfway lift, plant those hands into the leg, find that length, extending through the crown of the head. Bend the knees, press into your chair pose. Excellent, sink a little bit lower, strong through the outer lines of the legs. So imagine you have a band around your legs that you're pressing your knees into. Feel how that activates into the outside lines of those hips, into the feet, connecting everything from the toes all the way up to the eyebrows. Excellent, keep breathing. Roll shoulders back and down, maybe sink a little lower. Press all the way up to standing, reach up. And start center. Excellent, nice strong mountain pose. Finding that strength and squeezing your feet a little bit. I'm just trying to activate into my feet. I'm telling my brain, hey, we might be doing a balanced posture here. Feet, you need to be alert and paying attention. Excellent. Roll shoulders back and down. Palms facing forward. Beautiful. And bring one knee up. If it's just coming to point, that's fine. Or maybe you want to reach onto the knee or hug that knee in. Or even if you can reach underneath the foot, whatever works best for you. I'm just going to hold on at the knee. And then press into that standing leg. Can you find that extra bit of length? Beautiful. Bring opposite arm as the knee to the outside of the knee. Reach the other arm back and around. And coming into a nice twist. If you want more, you can start to extend the foot. 
Excellent. Still standing strong. Into that standing leg. Find your balance. Engage through the core. Beautiful. Let's start to untwist. See if you can still hold on to the knee. Oh, I lost it. All right. Beautiful. And can we counter twist? Mm, so opening up the opposite way. Excellent. Beautiful. So I know we've been standing on this leg for a while. Let's keep it going. Let's bring the knee out and plant the foot into whatever variation of tree you're working with. So even if it's down on the ground, that still counts. We're using that helping hand to tuck it right under. We're working for that bind. I don't have that at all today. That's okay. Beautiful. Let's start to grow our branches. Maybe you're reaching up. If you want to make a balance harder, change where you're looking. That's always a good rule of thumb. So if you're looking down on the ground, maybe bring your gaze to eye level. Or maybe start to bring it up. If you really want to challenge it, close your eyes. Beautiful. Let's drop the arms. With control, let's bring the knee out and drop it down. Beautiful. You can shake up the feet as you need to. Excellent. Let's get ready to come into the other side. So awakening into the feet, I like to do like little circles on them, putting all my weight in my toes and then in my heels and then finding neutral. Beautiful. Start to bring the other knee up. Maybe reaching onto the knee, underneath the knee, hugging it in deep or for the foot. Keep rolling shoulders back and down. Excellent. Press strong into that standing leg. Can you find some more length? Beautiful. Bring opposite hand of the knee to the outside of the leg. Reach back with the other hand. Coming into a nice twist. Excellent. Feeling maybe all of those little micro movements that the ankle is taking to stabilize. Connecting with the breath. Find that length. Excellent. Come back towards center. Ooh. Excellent. Hugging that knee in. And then gentle little counter twist. And opening up in the other direction. Excellent. Release. Come back in. Hold that leg. And let's move it into our tree pose. And so planting the foot. Opening the knee out. Maybe with helping hands. Bring that foot right up and in. Excellent. Start to grow our back branches as you find your stability. Maybe reaching the hands up. Excellent. Keep that core engaged. So as you reach the hands out, keep those bottom ribs coming inwards. Excellent. And playing around with the gaze. Maybe even trying to close through the eyes. Beautiful. One more full round of breath here. Excellent. Bring hands down. With control, let's release the leg. And drop it down and step it out. Excellent. Inhale, reach up. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, fold and dangle. And just hold the pose, hold the posture. Maybe this time reaching fingers for the great toes. We're tucking a couple of fingers underneath the feet or even the entirety of the hands. You can bend your knees as much as you need so to achieve that. The goal is never straight legs. So I release you from any of that shame that you might be experiencing, thinking your legs have to be straight in a forward fold. They do not. Even if you're down like this, it still counts. Excellent. Nice restorative pose. Let's release the fingers. Inhale. Halfway lift. Bend the knees. Sink the hips. And coming up into your chair pose. Maybe you want hands at heart center this time. Excellent. Pressing into those outer lines. Sink deep. Put the weight into the heels. Send the glutes back. Excellent. See if you can lift the heart. Excellent. Press all the way up to standing. Reach up. And start center. Excellent. Step that right foot back. Or step one of your feet back. And coming back into that nice warrior two. Reach the arms out. Excellent. Sink nice and deep. Let's take our extended side angle like we did before. Reach up and over. Coming to your depth. Maybe you want both arms up. Engaging strong through the core. Excellent. Let's come on back up, warrior two. And take a reverse warrior. 
Excellent. Lots of times as we bring the elbow up, and the leg starts to straighten out. Can you sink back into that? Excellent. Hand can be either on the hip, tracking down the leg, that makes it a little bit easier, or tracking behind the back and trying to wiggle through on the other side. Beautiful. Come on back up. Warrior two. Release the hands. Straighten the leg. Point both toes towards the long edge of the mat. Reach up for that beautiful star pose. And then sink into your goddess. You can point the knees out where the toes out for this. That might help. It's really similar to the forward fold, but instead of folding forward, we're sliding down that invisible wall back behind us. Excellent. Trying to keep shoulders over the hips. That tuck of the pelvis core is engaged. Excellent. Nice and strong. Press all the way up. And you can bring the toes pointing back towards that long edge. And exhale back into that wide-legged forward fold. Excellent. Still pressing firm into the feet. Start to walk your hands over towards one side. So then bring a bend to that knee, then start to bring yourself down. So my heel always pops up here, and it's okay if it does. And I'm going to point my extended leg toes up towards the ceiling, so I'm getting lots of stretch through the back line of this leg. Excellent. If you want to just simply hang out here, and that's always an option, or if you want more, you can bring a hand to the inside, reach up, maybe even back behind reaching for the bind, or if you want to try the toe stem, you can start to float that hand up. Excellent. I like to still add that resistance to the inside of the bent knee. Excellent. Planting that hand back down and starting to untwist, planting the extended leg toes back in. Press up back into that wide leg and forward fold. Let's take a full breath in the center here. Still dangling down, just resetting, becoming aware of the body. How does it feel? One side to the next. Excellent, so to walk your hands towards the other side and bring a bend to that knee. And then pop it up onto my toe. Excellent. Bringing that extended leg toes up. Hi, do you like this one? You're right, it is good. This is dog approved yoga. It's wonderful, isn't it? Thank you. I love you too. Can you go lay down? Mm, I guess that is what I asked, hey? Excellent. Off my mat. Off. Go. Just right here. Off. Okay. Well, we'll work with that. Excellent. So it's from here, sorry. I'm bringing the hand to the inside of the knee. Maybe reaching the hand up. Maybe calming around. Feeling that stretch through the back line of the extended leg, maybe playing around with the bind, or even starting to float and that stabilizing hand up off, coming into the toe stem variation. Excellent, plant back down. Hmm, start to frame that knee again. Okay, you have to move. Curling those extended leg toes down, start to press down. Come back into that wide legged forward fold. Excellent. Let's come out nice and safe here. Gentle bend to the knees. Let's come up halfway. Mix and long through the crown of the head. Bring the hands just above the knees. Roll shoulder back and down. Slight bend to the knees a little bit more. Reach up. Nice star pose. Come all the way up. And hands to heart center. Excellent. Point other toes. Pointing towards the front or I guess the back of your mat. Reach out for that nice warrior two. Sending it over to that extended side angle. And the finding that length, sinking into it. Beautiful. Holding here. A full couple breaths. Excellent. Let's come on back up to our warrior two. Front hand flips up, coming into that reverse warrior. So either hand on the hip. Sinking into that front leg, reaching up a little bit more, firm through the feet. Maybe hand tucks back behind you. And then reaching around for the other side. Gaze goes up where the gaze goes, the arm goes. And so if you're crumpling into this, try to open up through that shoulder. Excellent. 
a little more, sink into it. Let's come on back. Warrior two. Straighten through the front leg. Release the hands. And step towards the top of the mat. Excellent. My top of the mat keeps switching around. Let's inhale, reach up. Exhale, take a nice forward fold. Beautiful. And from here, bend one knee significantly. And send the opposite hip kind of rolling back. If you want, you can place your elbow on that knee, or if you can reach down for the ground, that's an option. Twist and open, opposite arm goes up. Excellent. Feeling that stretch intensely through the straight leg hamstring. A nice little twist through. Excellent. The exhale, we'll lower the hand back down, straighten slightly through both knees. Don't hyperextend or lock through the knees. Bend through the other side. Rest the knee, elbow on the knee, or reach down for the ground, and open up, stack shoulder over shoulder. <sighs> Breathing into it. Excellent. And start to untwist. And straight through both legs, extend halfway left, bend through the knees, sink through the hips, sweep up, take that chair pose, strong through the glutes, strong through the legs, and the sidelines of the legs, maybe even lifting the toes up off the ground. Excellent, exhale, back into a nice forward fold. <sighs> Inhale, halfway lift, exhale, plant the hands, and step back into a downward dog. Extend long through the hands and then bend the knees and take your child's pose. Excellent. Adjusting the hands as you might need to. Beautiful. Connecting with the breath. Excellent. Starting to press into those hands. Walking the hands forward. Making your way into a seated position again. Excellent. Working on one of my favorites now. And so how I like to start this out is with one leg extended out, and I'm trying to bring my calf kind of parallel, I guess, with the mat. Or making it like a 90 degrees through that thigh, through the shin. Excellent. And then I take my other leg, and ideally I'm trying to stack knee over ankle on both sides. So connecting it on one side, it's very normal for this to look maybe even something like this and for you to need to bring your hands back behind you or trying to get one knee down or pressing into the other knee and trying to get both knees down and then maybe even walking the hands either in front to try to find that length. What a nice little fire log pose. Whatever leg is on top, you'll probably feel this huge through the hip and then extend up. If this is still easy for you, you're like, what do you mean people are struggling with this? And then you can start to bring a forward fold into it. Maybe just bringing the elbows onto the legs, or reaching those hands forward, maybe even dropping the head, or trying to keep the back flat. Excellent. And can you breathe into it? Not letting this be painful. So if you're feeling intense pain here, obviously back off. But if it's just a little uncomfortable and you're starting to really feel that stress or that tension start to go away as you hold the pose, that's finding that yoga edge. Finding it where it's a little uncomfortable, but you can still manage through it. That's where the deepening and we start to build trust with our muscles as we hold postures. I'm going to talk about that in my yin and restorative classes as we were sitting there and holding as long as we're not in pain because that is our body's warning system. Um, to back off because we don't want to have injury happen. But if it's just uncomfortable, then that top layer of the muscle can uh, relax, release. And then as that next layer is like, oh wait, there's tension here. It's okay, the tension is good. That's your body system of working with you. But then as it realizes it's safe, you're not like it's not going to cause injury, then oh, it relaxes, releases. And so even holding this pose, you might have noticed and that that hip has started to roll down, maybe a little more soften through those hip flexors. Next, let's start to walk those hands up. If you're in the forward fold, and then release the legs out long. Remember which leg was on top. And give it a nice little shake. You can even windshield wipe your knees from side to side. 
that excellent coming to some stillness and then getting ready to set up on the other side and so placing the leg that was on top first finding that 90 degrees if you can and then ideally grabbing the other leg maybe bringing ankle on to the knee and taking a moment to adjust feel those sits bones maybe starting to bring that knee towards the ankle Find that little bit of length, extend through the crown of the head. Still feel those sits bones, even if you need to have your hands back here. And that's totally fine. That's still probably pretty intense on that top leg hip. But if you're able to, then we can start to journey up. Find that length, maybe bringing elbows on, maybe reaching those hands. And let's start that journey into building trust. So don't forget to breathe here. Connect with the breath. Uh, ideally, I was trying to take five full rounds of breaths, not those quick breaths, but where you can actually fill the lungs all the way down to the bottom and then let it go nice and slow. Excellent. Excellent. Extending long through that crown of the head. And can you soften? And I love to imagine like butter melting in a pan, just slowly starting to soften away. Can you release any tension that you might be holding on here? Beautiful. Excellent. Keep holding here one more full round of breath. And then start, if you're in the four fold, start to press into those hands, coming up nice and slow. Then you bring the hands back behind you. And release the legs, send the long windshield wiper from side to side. And then dropping knees from one side to the other. And you knees together, or a fun way to do this is knees aligning with the feet, just to add some spice to your life. Excellent. And come back to some stillness and hug the knees in towards the chest. Roll those shoulders back and down. Excellent. Feel that length. Beautiful. And then let's start to roll down into a nice reclined uh, position here. Hoping that you guys can still see me as I recline. Excellent. Roll those shoulders back and down. Really feel the amount of space shoulder blades can take up. And soften through the feet. Maybe bring them a little bit closer to your sits bones. Make sure knees are aligned with the feet. Feel the entirety of the spine trying to press into the back. So it's like tuck the chin length through the crown of the head. Excellent. Keep reaching for those heels. You'll feel that lift through the collarbone. Beautiful. And low back, pressing in towards the mat. Excellent. I'm going to take just a little bridge pose here. So pressing into the feet, lifting the hips up. A nice restorative position here. So as the hips go up, so does this whole section of the body. Bring the heart slightly above the head. Excellent. You can go as deep as you want here. I'm just hanging out nice and gentle. I may be working at like 30 to 50% of what my full on bridge would be. And just enough to press into the feet, feeling the feet gripping in. I don't have to reach my hands down. Maybe now I'm going to press it a little bit higher, setting my hips higher, making sure the knees don't splay open, but keep them in track with the feet. Pressing into the heels, toes come up off the ground. Feel that activation into the glutes. Press the feet firm down, lift the heels, press into the toes, feel that activation into the quads. Excellent, press firm into the foot. And lower down one vertebrae at a time, like you're massaging those muscles that run along the spine. Excellent, slowly coming down. Excellent. And then let's come into our figure four. And so I'm going to start by bringing my right ankle onto my left knee. And start here just by opening up. Send that right knee back. Maybe just this is enough for you. You can really feel it through that hip. Can you soften, relax, release? If you want more here, that's when you can start to float that left leg up. Reach on through, maybe grabbing behind the thigh, the top of the knee, maybe even on the calf or that shin area, hugging the legs in as deep as you'd like to. You can even reach for the foot if you really want to hug them in close to the body. But if the head starts to float up, odds are you've gone too high, so lower the head back down and soften through the shoulders. And if you want to take some movement here, just a roll from side to side often just feels really nice. 
really sweet on that low back area. And come to that stillness. And then let's start to bring this in towards our twist. So try and keep the legs more or less where they are. Release the hands. Bring them out wide like a T. And then drop the legs towards the left. So level one would be just dropping them, maybe having them hang out here, maybe touching that right foot down. If you want more, you can start to drop that right knee down, maybe even tucking the foot underneath or bringing that hand over top, not actively cranking into the hip or the knee, but just letting the weight of the hand weigh down on the body, starting to feel that through the right hip. Gaze maybe goes towards the right as well. Excellent. Connect with the breath. Can you take three full rounds of breath here? So I know you're twisted. There's a bit of a restriction. But I always like to say that we, you can learn to breathe deeply even with a restriction of the twist. And that'll just help prep you for the rest of life and stressful situations to automatically know how to breathe a little deeper. Because when you feel like the weight of the world is on your shoulders, then you can still remember to take that nice deep breath and let it go. Excellent. Return the neck to neutral. Release the knee if you have it. And start to swing the legs up nice and slow. Planting the foot in. Release. And if you want, you can windshield wipe for the legs should you feel you need to. And then let's get ready to set up on the other side. So now I'm bringing my left ankle onto my right knee. I'm opening up, sending that left knee back, really trying to feel the stretch even here. Excellent. If you are looking for some more, and then you can start to float that right leg up. Maybe you reach on through, just grabbing for behind. Even if you can't, like even if you just want to hold the foot a little bit closer, uh, that's always an option as well. If you find it uncomfortable to reach the hands behind the thigh. Maybe you want the top of the knee, or hugging in for the calf or the shin, or even the ankle or the foot. You can take that gentle rock from side to side. Should that feel really nice? And then connect in with some stillness. Excellent. We did lots of forward folds today. I just mostly because my low back was tight and I just find that's a great way to release. And this really targets into that sideline over the hips, which is also a great stretch and release. And can you relax through those shoulders, holding just enough tension to keep those legs in place, not like crunching them together. Just relax, let it go. And then let's start to move this into our twist. And so we're releasing the legs. We're trying to keep them more or less where they are. I'm bringing my right knee more over my hip, reaching my arms out nice and wide. Shoulder blades are still back and down. I'm dropping the legs towards the right hand side. I'm trying to keep both shoulder blades planted and maybe just hanging out here. Or starting that journey of that top knee coming down, maybe even reaching on, maybe even looking to the side. Connecting with that breath. And can you take these three full breaths here? <sighs> Staying with it. Not letting the distractions of what's going on around you sink in. Just connect with the breath. Feel the lungs fill and let go and soften. On the next exhale, start to return that neck to neutral. And then release the hands, swing the legs up. And then cross, and you can simply just hug both knees in towards the chest. Or you can come into my ever classic happy baby or awkward adult to finish up in. Either reaching through the knees before the ankles, the back of the knees, or even the feet, bringing the feet up towards the ceiling knees come towards the underarms. Add a little resistance, so actively pull into the feet, kick into the hands, feel how that presses the spine, and slight tuck of the chin, head is nice and long, just a nice resetting of the spine. And then now if there is any other movement you would love to take, I always like to offer a little bit of freestyle, mm, so if you want a little happy baby cobbler, that's always a, a great option. If you want shoulder stand or plow, or if you just want to hold the knees in, it's a reclined child's pose too, if you want. Technically the same thing. 
Excellent. And then if you want, you can simply just send the legs long, settle into that final pose, that corpse pose for you. Relaxing in, getting nice and comfy. I'm gonna make my way up to a seated position so that whoever's watching this doesn't think I'm sleeping in the pose. But connecting in with the breath, starting to come inward again, sensing into how you're feeling after a little bit of movement. How do the hips feel? How does the spine feel? How do the ribs feel? Shoulders, ankles, the whole body. How are you feeling now? If there's still tension, that's okay. And then start to just connect in with the breath. One of my favorite breath techniques is equal part breathing or samariti breathing, where you try to match the length of the inhale with the exhale. So I'm gonna go ahead and cue that so that not serve you at any point. Go ahead and just let it go and just focus on trying to breathe nice and deep. And so getting ready, just taking a good adorable breath, breathe again, letting it go. And then breathe again for three, two, one, holding, exhaling for three, two, one, hold, inhale for three, two, one, exhale for three, two, one, inhale for three, two, one, exhale for three, two, one. Return to a normal state of breathing, just letting the lungs fill and letting it go. I'm starting to bring some gentle movement back into the body. Maybe a little wiggle of fingers and toes, rolling of wrists and ankles. Maybe a nice good morning stretch, reaching the arms up overhead. Look, you're laying down, setting the toes nice and long. And then exhale, release. Making your way slowly up to a seated position to join me. If you like to roll on to your favorite side, choosing that side, and pressing up with the top arm. Excellent. Roll the shoulders back and down. Bring hands to heart center. I thank you so much for letting me guide you in a practice today and sharing your practice with me. Um, it's always fun and this is new and different, so feel free to post any photos that you might have had from what your setup looked like. Um, yeah, it's just so fun and so wonderful. I'm glad we got to take some movement. I hope you have a lovely rest of your evening. May you always have a day filled with joy. May you always be blessed. Namaste. Thank you so much.